2 Corinthians 13, praying for the church, the body of Christ, specifically Alan Barda. Verse 1, this will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Father, you've given me many witnesses, and I pray that you would give Alan brothers who are trustworthy in the faith. But that he wouldn't discuss it with anyone until he's first of all spent time with you on it, and then talk to me about it since I'm part of the body verse 2 I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time I now repeat it while absent on my return I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the others and it's as if those are the words of Christ himself, right? They might as well be words in red. On his return, his second coming, he's not going to spare anyone. He's not going to excuse anyone. Not that he's double-minded the way Christians have made him out to be. It's Satan who he's using as his servant to pour out his wrath on humanity. So Father, I pray that Ellen would take you seriously in receiving this book. You keep making it so clear every day. When I go back in there to edit, you beef it up and tighten it up and there's no way he could read it. And continue to play this game Christians are the body of Christ is playing pretending to be faithful don't let him do it verse 3 it continues with verse 2, so I'll start with verse 2. On my return, I will not spare those who sin earlier on any or any of the others, since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. Father, I pray that you would show yourself, show Christ powerful through the book, I mean, you certainly have to me, but you would do it for Alan, that he would see your hand all over it, that he would sense your spirit, that he would have no doubt about it, that you're behind it, and that he would be appalled and challenged. Verse 4. For to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power, we will live with him to serve you. Let him see the power that I have, that I have in God. And it's obvious to still be standing firm in the faith after all these after all this time and against all these people <sighs> let him be honest and that i am serving them because i'm serving the lord anyone who serves the lord serves his people Verse 5, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you, not, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. 
Father, I pray that Alan would examine himself throughout the pages of the book. That he would be 100% open to your correction. That he would clearly see and be shocked. Wow, how could we have done that? How could I have done that? And eagerly and quickly repent of it. Verse 6, and I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Amen. I trust that he will discover that I have not failed the test. So obvious. Let him be honest about it. Please show me an honest Christian. I'm 60 years old, isn't it about time? Verse 7, now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. Father, I pray that Alan would repent and therefore pass the test so that you can use him to lead the others to repent so that they also pass the test so that we as a body can finally pass the test with flying colors through the latter rain downpour. let them all be honest that we have been failing the test miserably <sighs> it's like those people that law students that take the bar exam again and again and again having failed the test and then finally pass it and my guess would be because they studied so much that when they do pass it they pass it with flying colors. <sighs> At least scoring better than the norm. <sighs> Verse eight, for we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. Father, I pray that that would become true of the members of the body of Christ, that we would stop walking in lies and only honor the truth. Pray that specifically for Alan. Verse nine, we are glad whenever we're weak, but you are strong and our prayer is for your perfection. Father, my prayer is obviously for their perfection, for the perfection of the entire body of Christ. Verse 10, this is why I write these things. That's right. When I am absent, that when I come, that when the Lord comes, he may not have to be harsh in his use of, of authority. I'm praying and reading at the same time. The authority the Lord gave me, gave him, the Father gave Jesus for building up the body of Christ, not for tearing down. The one who tears down, there's two that do it, Satan and every member of the body of Christ. Let Alan see that, that we are the ones who keep choosing to walk in the lies, to honor the lies, to serve the lie.
Verse 11, finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Amen. Father, let Alan aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Let him listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Make us of one mind with Christ. Live in peace that the body of Christ could live in peace for at least a season long enough for you to gather your harvest. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Father, I pray that he would see clearly that what Carrie, and I didn't mention it in the book, but when Bill and Richie Crane and David Bradbury left our house giving us the ultimatum, having given us the ultimatum, they hugged us. And what's a Christian to do but hug back, right? Just like Jesus did, because God is love. He did it knowing that he was being betrayed. Same thing. We knew they weren't right with God, but we let them hug us anyway. And it was a Judas hug. <sighs> let Alan clearly see that and be disgusted by it, as he should be. <sighs> Build up the body so that we do finally greet one another with a holy kiss. Not that thing people do around here. I guess it's everywhere, but I notice it more here for some reason. They're all huggy, kissy, just like I grew up in my family. My sister and my mother, huggy, kissy, huggy, kissy all the time. I mean, it's a Latin thing, Latin American thing, European thing too. But it wasn't a holy kiss. <laughs> Neither is it with the body of Christ. Change us, transform us from the inside out. Verse 13, all the saints, whoops, all the saints send, all the saints send their greetings. Verse 14, the last in the chapter. Yep. Last in the book of 2 Corinthians. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Father, that's what I pray for. That you would give us the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that we would finally walk in the love of God rather than in the hatred of the fallen angels as we are currently doing. Let Ellen admit it and be the instrument for change. Amen.